describe your involvement and your impressions about Medici II. Medici II uh, was a brainchild of Marty Zoligman's about a year or two ago, and I was fortunate enough to be a, have been involved in the initial planning of this. And what we wanted to do was to bring together uh, people who were interested in positive psychology in the same time, same place, uh, work on some specific projects, uh, but more importantly, interact with one another. And what has happened is, I think, exceeded our, our expectations. Uh, we're going to get the projects done that we originally planned, but that's not surprising because we're all a bunch of people who finish projects. But I don't think we anticipated um, how invigorating it would be to just be in close proximity to one another for week after week. We actually liked each other more at the end than, than at the beginning. At Medici uh, two, I've been involved in, in two projects. Uh, the first project uh, intends to take a look at the sorts of constructs that positive psychologists are interested in, uh, life satisfaction, positive emotions, a sense of meaning, a sense of uh, engagement, character strengths, uh, and the like, and relate these to what we call hard outcomes. Uh, for the past five years, we've done a lot of research relating these sorts, sorts of variables to reports of happiness and satisfaction, and those, I think, are very important. Uh, in the best of all possible worlds, we wouldn't need to justify what we're doing any further because I think happiness is an unalloyed good. Uh, on the other hand, if we want the larger world to sit up and pay attention to what we're doing, we're going to have to go beyond these, these kind of mushy measures of, of happiness and start to study the sorts of outcomes that policymakers care about. And that seems to be productivity at work, uh, defined in various ways, uh, and it seems to be physical health, and related to that is the uh, utilization of, 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 of health care, which, at least in the United States, is, uh, is quite the crisis. And if we can find out um, that positive psychology constructs make a difference in productivity and or health and or health utilization, and then perhaps if we can undertake some interventions to uh, improve happiness, improve well-being, improve character, uh, with the consequent uh, improvement of productivity, uh, improvement in good health, then we will have made quite a tangible uh, contribution to the larger world. Um, what we've done for the last six weeks is to brainstorm uh, about possible institutions in which we might kind of do these sorts of projects, and although nothing is definitively lined up, uh, we've had productive conversations uh, with people in the military, with people in uh, health healthcare um, uh, providers, uh, people in various uh, businesses, uh, uh, teachers, and we've got a whole other list of folks we want to we want to talk to. The second project that I'm involved with here at Medici uh, is is a very ambitious attempt to take positive psychology to the larger world. We've had great success with our various websites uh, and hundreds of thousands of people have registered and taken measures and learned about positive psychology. There are millions and millions of hits. Uh, the only problem with our websites is that they require that somebody be, uh, be an English speaker or at least an English uh, reader. Um, so we decided to create parallel websites in the Chinese language and the Spanish language, uh, next to English, two of the two of the uh, most common languages in the world. I think if we start to add up English, Spanish, and Chinese speakers, we have about half 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 the planet taken care of. Um, so we've lined up expert translators, and we're doing the state of the art translation, back translation, et cetera, et cetera, and hope to have these. Chinese and Spanish websites up, up and running uh, in several months, assuming that's all successful. We'll start to think about some of the other ma major language communities uh, on the planet. So I would imagine uh, Russian, um, German, uh, French, uh, maybe Japanese, maybe Hindi, maybe Urdu. Um, although there may be thousands of languages on the planet, if we can do eight or ten of the most common 
we, in principle, will have reached 90% of the world. Describe how you think Medici II and follow-up seminars will affect positive psychology and the rest of your career. Uh, Medici II will affect uh, the future course of positive psychology, I hope, uh, in a positive way by stimulating uh, projects that are more interdisciplinary than many that have been conducted uh, in the past. We had folks here who were uh, philosophers, uh, of course, psychologists, but also sociologists, ger gerontologists, people interested in education, uh, in business, in healthcare, and we interacted and spoke and I, and I think enriched one another. And positive psychology is too big a field to be uh, limited to just one, one discipline. Discuss your area of interest within positive psychology. My interest in positive psychology center on strengths of character and virtues, uh, traits like kindness and curiosity uh, and the ability to, to love. Um, a lot of the work that I've done for the last five years uh, entails coming up with ways to measure these characteristics. And finally, we've got the measures in place. We're starting to learn some interesting things. So, for instance, we found that certain traits are strongly associated with, with happiness, traits like hope uh, and love and gratitude. And they seem to be associated with uh, gratitude among, among three-year-olds and among 93-year-olds. It's really, I think, kind of exciting. We call these strengths of the heart as opposed to strengths of the mind or strengths of the brain, if you will. And um, I get a bit confused because formal education, of course, emphasizes the strengths of the mind, but we're discovering that it's the strengths of the heart that make people happy and satisfied. And maybe we should have some uh, coursework along the way in how to be a kinder, more loving person. And I don't mean sex education. I mean something, something more general than that. In the year 2000, the Mayerson Foundation approached Marty Seligman and, and asked him if he would be interested in coordinating a project to classify and measure the important uh, strengths of, of, of character. Um, I got involved in the project shortly thereafter, and we spent three years at the University of Pennsylvania uh, doing a lot of reading, uh, a lot of writing, a lot of speaking to other people, and we arrived at a classification of important human, human strengths. While we don't claim that we've got every possible uh, strength that can be imagined, we certainly have a good sampling of them, and we think we have a sampling of them that uh, are recognized in almost all places around the world. Uh, the second part of this project was to come up with ways to measure these strengths, and we've got self-report questionnaires, which we have uh, placed on various websites and have been uh, tremendously popular, even though they can be time-consuming for, for people to complete. Uh, we've also come up with ways of interviewing people. Uh, we've also come up with ways of uh, scoring uh, written material that's been really left behind by, by, by folks, by biographers and the like, for the presence of strengths. And what I hope to be doing in the next year or so with, with, with my colleagues is to look at this biographical material um, I'd like to be able to come back next summer to the, Med the Medici Conference, which will be Benjamin Franklin's 300th birthday, um, and report on Franklin's 13 virtues and hope to be able to say that at least 12 of the 13 were present in his own life.